We are going to do a cash flow statement for Bossy Pants Corporation. And no, this doesn't have anything to do with Tina Fey. Alrighty, when we first start, you want to have the structure, basic structure set up on your page. So you've got the name of the company and the name of the statement. And this is for the year ended 12 21 2011. Then I like to do this heading cash flow from operating activities. Leave a bunch of space. You don't know exactly how many lines you're going to need, but usually that's, you know, this is sufficient. Then cash flow from investing and have some lines available there. And cash flow from financing and have a few lines. So at the bottom of the page, which is kind of an interesting thing, but you can start from the bottom up. And we look at our ending cash balance, and we get that by coming over to our data. And the ending cash balance is 24640 So write that in. Our beginning cash balance is 23040 and the difference between the two is our net change in cash. So it uh, cash went up by 1600. And this number is going to be our check figure. When we're done our cash flows from operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities will equal 1600 And if they don't, then we know we've made a mistake and we'll go back and find it. However, since I've already been through this problem before, we're not going to be making a mistake, I hope. All right, so the first section that you want to do is the operating section. And we're going to be analyzing the change in current assets. So that's why we need our two years of balance sheet. Uh, we've already analyzed the cash account. So uh, accounts receivable is our next current asset. And the accounts receivable went up by 2,780. So, uh, oh, you know what, I've, I've got to go back. Our beginning number that we start with on the indirect method is net income. And net income is given at the bottom of the income statement, 43,650. So that's where we start. Now we will add... Uh, I mean, not add, but we will take into account the increase in accounts receivable. So, um, increase in accounts receivable. And accounts receivable is going up, and so we are going to deduct it. Uh, if you follow the instructions in your textbook, it lays out very clearly what you do with the increases and decreases in current assets. Uh, and so uh, increases in current assets are subtracted. Our next current asset is inventory. And inventory also went up. So increase in inventory. And it went from 61,710 to 73,125 which is an increase of 11,415 and we're going to subtract that as well. Okay, we have no more current assets to analyze, so we'll jump down to our current liabilities. Uh, the changes in current liabilities, we've got accounts payable and it went up. Increase in Accounts payable of 24,620. And we're going to add that increase. Then, uh, let's see, 
let's see what else have we got income taxes payable question is that is that a current asset or a, or a current liability or a long-term liability well I can tell you right now the IRS does not want to wait for more than a year to get paid so it is a current liability and that went up by let's see did it go up yeah up by 525 increase in income taxes payable and we're going to add that okay and we don't have any other current liabilities so before I continue on I just want to uh, say that these adjustments are made to the net income because the net income is prepared on an accrual basis which means there's some items uh, that have been included in here um, that did not involve cash and so there's like revenues that are included and so we're adding uh, we're going to subtract out revenues that we have not yet received in cash and there's some expenses that have been included and uh, but we didn't actually pay them and so we're going to add those back because the number that we want to end up with is going to be the net cash flows from operating activities. And since there's some of these uh, activities in operations that have not involved cash, we're basically reversing, um, reversing them out. All right, so the next thing that we're going to look at here is we have to add back our depreciation expense so you come over here to the income statement and you've got depreciation of 29,400 so we'll add that back and then we also uh, add back any losses well let me back up here the reason we add back depreciation expense is that is a non-cash expense you, you debit depreciation expense and you credit accumulated depreciation so no cash is going out so we're adding that back and then losses and gains are uh, losses are added back and gains are subtracted because they don't represent cash a loss uh, does not represent that we spent 8400 uh, on our equipment. In fact, we sold our equipment and cash came in. But this loss is included in our net income figure, but it doesn't represent a cash outflow, so we're going to be adding that back. And if we had had a gain, I would have subtracted that out as well. So our uh, operating section is complete. Net cash provided by operations. And I'm going to put this over here in the outside column just so that we can uh, more easily read this statement. Now, when you pre uh, prepare the investing section, you're going to be analyzing the changes in the uh, long-term assets. So, our first long-term asset is long-term investments and they went down which means we would have sold long-term investments and if you look at the additional information note one says there was no gain or loss on the sales of the long-term investments if there would have been that gain or loss would have also shown up in the income statement here so uh, we will write down sale of 
investments and we uh, the difference between these two numbers is five hundred dollars so that is what we sold then the next one that we've got is equipment and equipment went up by thirty thousand does that mean we bought thirty thousand dollars worth of equipment well maybe but let's look at these notes and we'll find out a little bit more actually two things happened with the equipment if you look on note uh, two actually we've got two notes labeled two little little mistake on this uh, but it says old equipment with an original cost of thirty seven five fifty was sold for twenty one hundred in cash all right so we are doing a cash flow statement and so we are going to focus on how much cash did we get so we got twenty one hundred so that is the number that we write here and this is an inflow so it's a positive amount then uh, it says that we sold or we purchased new equipment for sixty seven five five oh cash so here we would have purchase of equipment for sixty seven five five oh that is an outflow so we put brackets around that okay let's see do we have any other long-term assets no we don't so we can sum this up net cash provided by investing and that is 64 nine five oh outflow so it's a net cash outflow um, and actually because it's an outflow it's more accurate to write net cash used by investing activities all right now when we're doing the cash flow from financing section we analyze the long-term liabilities and the equity section so first long-term and actually only long-term is notes payable it went down we would assume that we paid them off if we come down to the uh, note number two here it says notes payable were paid with cash so that just confirms that we did pay them off in cash and we didn't roll it over into some uh, maybe short-term note payable so first item here would be cash paid on retirement of notes or you could say cash paid for notes payable or notes payable paid off and that was 17,250 it's pretty good that we were able to pay that off and brackets because it's an outflow so we've taken care now of oh I didn't check this off on equipment up here let's check this off down here okay now the equity uh, common stock went up and so did contributed capital in excess of par now we're going to look at both of these together because it was one transaction when you sell stock um, you you credit the common stock for the par value and then the excess goes into contributed capital in excess of par so how much did we really receive well let's write this in cash received from stock issuance the common stock went up by 21,000 and the contributed capital went up by four so add those two together and we sold the total for 25,000 do not separate these out 
do not separate uh, the the common stock from the paid in capital it doesn't make sense it's a single transaction add them together and show them as one cash flow coming in so we've basically accounted for those two items okay now last is um, it says cash dividends of 33,600 were paid so we'll say cash dividends paid 33,600 and that's an outflow okay so that completes our statement and let's see when you add these up it's 25850 net outflow so we'll put net cash used for financing activities now we can add 92400 minus 64950 minus 25850 and it equals 1600 so we know we've done this completely uh, correct I wanted to make a couple of uh, observations on on this just suppose that they didn't give us the cash dividends we could have figured them out by doing a little analysis of the retained earnings account so I'm just going to squeeze a little T account in here this is retained earnings our beginning retained earnings was 63,270. now net income flows into retained earnings so that would have increased our retained earnings and then we know our ending retained earnings balance is 73,320 so if you were to add 63,270, 43,650 and minus what to get 73,320 that's going to be 33,600 so you know you would have paid those dividends this problem made it a little easier by giving you the amount of dividends but you would have been able to figure that out and should be able to uh, do that analysis to determine what those dividends were again I have found when I do these statements the easiest way is to do them on paper first and set up your headline or your your heading and then your different categories and leave plenty of space you'll see I have extra space here and then put your uh, final three numbers in figure out what is your check number and then you can uh, go from there